Hi. In this episode, I'm going to create a map layout that updates depending on the content. Okay. Uh, for this, I am using uh, QGIS uh, 310, uh, which is the latest version right now. Um, and I'm going to have uh, some form of background in some parts of it. Um, I'm also uh, going to use OpenStreetMap water areas. And if I turn the background map off, um, which is a few different classes and um, I have re-projected this layer into a projected coordinate system. Uh, I think that is good <laughs> to do when you are calculating areas because that is one of the things I want to do. Uh, I want to create a layout where uh, depending on the extent of the layout uh, I want to uh, summarize the lake areas of that extent. So I'm just going to create a simple layout like that. Uh, add the map like so. Uh, and I want to have a text field. That should say this and that much hectares of area. That should be okay. Like that. So, how do I calculate the areas uh, for this layer in uh, hectares? Well, I do that with an expression. So instead of this xxx, I insert an expression. Um, so the area that is a built-in function, area. Uh, but since I'm not typing this uh, connected to the map or to even to the layer, uh, it is in a text field. This will give me nothing. Uh, so I need to specify what area I want. And to do that, um, and also connected to the um, map view, and I want to summarize it, um, there's a function called aggregate. And uh, aggregate takes a layer uh, in your map and it can aggregate in a lot of different ways. I'm all only interested in summary for now, but you can aggregate in a, a lot of different ways. The expression will include the area for that, um, but I also uh, Later on, at least, I will also include some additional expressions, but area will be fine for now. And then I need to filter it only to summarize the areas that is actually in view. So one thing I need to do first is to fix so I can address this map in some way. And I do that by setting the item ID. And I'm just going to call it main. So right now this map has the uh, ID main. Okay, go back here. Insert the expression. And I want to do aggregate. And first of all I need to put in a layer. So um, let's map layers. This layer is the water area. 
like that. Let's see what it was they wanted. The aggregate type. That should be sum. Because it says so here. And it's a string. The next is the expression. And that is my area. And that's the only mandatory uh, field uh, values uh, or yeah but to be able to just use the lakes visible I need to filter it so I need to add that as well and to filter this I need to um, somehow figure out which lake areas uh, is visible and to do that I need to um, use a function called intersect intersects and that takes two geometries um, test whether a geometry intersects another returns true if the geometry spatially intersect share any portion of space and false if they do not so to get the lake geometries that's easy that's just geometry okay so we have the intersects function and the geometry of the lakes now we need to get the geometry or the extent of the map layout uh, and to to get that we need to use a maps function and this is not the actual map it is uh, maps or a group that contains expressions functions for the creation and manipulation of map data structures or dictionary objects which is key value pairs so it may be a bit confusing uh, to use the term maps but never mind uh, it's confusing uh, try to <laughs> get past it um, anyway to get the maps we use the map get function so let's see map get and then we need to specify what map and uh, that is used uh, we use um, item variables function which returns a map of variables from a composer item and that item has the item ID main you remember we uh, created or uh, named the map element uh, main so that's the map and the key I want to use is here's an example uh, map scale but I don't want the scale I want the extent so I'm going to put in map extent so now we have intersects let's close intersects as well uh, aggregate from the water layer uh, by summarizing areas that intersects the extent of the map and let's close the aggregate function as well uh, now QG starts to calculate things uh, as you see here it's a huge number so to start with I want it in hectares and not square meters so I divide it by 10,000 and I also want to round it uh, but instead of rounding it I'm going to format it as a number so format number uh, and I don't want any decimals like that and the difference between round and format is that you get this a bit nicer text format but remember when you format a number it becomes text so if I say round, it's still numbers. So that's a very important 
difference. So in this case, I want to present it as text, and therefore I can use format number, like that. Okay. Now it calculates, takes a bit of time. Uh, and now when I move the map, nothing happens. And that's because th this calculation is only done when I update the map. Uh, and updating the map can be done by pressing this button or uh, when I uh, export it or print it. So there will be an update if you just print it. Uh, but when you pan it like this, it will not update. Uh, okay. Now I'm using intersects, which means if I go to an area with a huge lake, this is really big. It could cover the entire screen, but if it just intersects with the extent, it will be included. I may want that, or I may not want it. Uh, if I don't want it, I can fix that as well. Let's fix that. So, <clears throat> uh, in that case, I don't want to calculate the entire area. I only want to calculate the area that is actually inside the map extent. So, I can use this function, copy, and instead of the built-in area, I can use an area function, and that takes a geometry. And to create um, the geometry that is uh, cut by the extent of the map, there is another function called intersection, I think. Intersection returns a geometry that represents the shared portion of two geometries. So let's put in intersection. Uh, the geometry from the layer. And the geometry from the map extent. And let's see, I need to close that area parenthesis. And now it starts to calculate. Here we go. So, now I calculate the area for the parts of the lake layer that intersects um, the uh, extent. And not all the lake areas. Okay, nothing changed. Let's update. Oh, now it changed. Significantly lower. So if I just pan the map a little bit, include more lake here, a little less here, it should be updated as well. Yep. However, there's another issue here. In my lake layer, I have a lot of... Uh, not lakes, <laughs> if we put it like that. Uh, it's water areas or uh, swamps. So if I update this uh, map extent, it will be pretty large. I'm just going to put in a space here. Like that. It's pretty large. So I may only want to count the actual lake areas. So I need to modify my expression a bit more. Uh, so in my aggregate function, I have this filter, which is, uh, let's see, intersects, geometry, and map extent. But I could add to that filter. For instance, I could add 
uh, the water area. I need to find... Okay. Let's look at the table. It's called F-class and it's water. So F-class water. So it intersects, but I also want to know if F class equals water and it intersects. So if it is an actual water area and it intersects with the extent it should be summarized in the aggregate function. Let's try that. So we have 4, 3, 1, 2, and now it's 5, 8, 8 hectares, which is probably more accurate. That is uh, more or less what I wanted to show you. You can then build functions for a lot of different aggregates in your map layouts uh, and this can be used for uh, atlases uh, or like I did here just when you pan and update your map. Um, I had one other item on my previous layout. Let's see. I had this table and this is not a especially difficult thing. It's just I added a table, an attribute table to the layout, uh, specified the layer I wanted it to be, and I removed all attributes that I didn't want to include, created one of my own, which is just a round function of the area in hectares. Uh, remember, I used format number previously because that was a text. Now I need to use the number, so I round it instead. Uh, then I sort it by this rounded number in descending order, so the largest lake that is at all visible in the map shows up first with its complete area and you can change uh, the function uh, to anything you want essentially uh, and I also filter it I link it to the ma main map and I filter it for uh, F class that is water and names um, that is actually something and not an empty string. So if I remove that, I will get a lot of nameless lakes, and uh, those are pretty useless to me. So, and name. Not like that. Oops. So when I pan this, the attribute table is actually updated as soon as I pan it. But the text here is not calculated unless I print the map, uh, export it, or update uh, the view or refresh the view like that. So uh, hopefully you can use uh, these functions in uh, your own maps in some way or another and remember that the aggregate function has a lot more to offer than just to uh, summarize a value from uh, attribute table. See you next time!